What's up, everybody? It is time again for the Naked Impress. Yes, I am back. And it is time to get vlog number two. So, and this vlog is called The Struggle is Real. So, I'm going to go into one of the topics that I definitely wanted to... Well, the topic that really inspired this vlog, and that is the topic of the struggle of being an emerging artist, especially after being an artist for damn near all your life. So if you've heard any interview from me, most people know that I started off doing gospel music. I grew up traveling the country, singing in the Gospel Music Workshop of America. Um, as I got older, kind of veered off in my own passions of music and really, you know, I've always been a poet even from elementary school. So I, when I was, when I moved to DC, I got on the poetry scene and, you know, was doing my thing. Right became, before that, I was rapping. I went from poetry to rap and now I get into rock and roll music. I absolutely love rock. The grunginess, the hardness, the uh, And it's always been a part of me. I've always been a Tom girl. Always gravitated to edgy stuff. You know, even as a child, finding songs I wasn't supposed to listen to, like Millie Jackson, and though it was way before my time, you know. So that's just a little history on my evolution of being an art. Even before that, um, before I started Needless singing. to say, the struggle is definitely real. So from the first time I released the song, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I just randomly found someone um, through research who sold beats and then that's how I did my first one. They released the beat to me, I recorded the song. I just put it out. Now, um, but I really didn't know how to market in this market. Um, I, I've been in the underground rock and rap scene for so long in D.C. that, you know, and not just D.C., but other places. The second song, I just happened to be on YouTube searching for rhythms, and I came across Freddie Havis the Third, and that's how I got my second single, Show Me, Today, I just wanted to talk about, I was going to let you in to the personal side because most people don't know the sacrifice. Like a lot of people tell this, like I said in the first vlog, a lot of people tell their story after the glory, after they're big, after, you know, they are well-known. I'm telling you the truth right now while I'm living in it, how the struggle is real. You see this little, it's a cute little quaint background. This is my little apartment. I went from living in a big house, living in this small apartment, a small artist apartment. Now, how did I go from making almost six figures and living in a nice home to barely making any money <laughs> and living in a small apartment? It's my choice. And I made a lot of sacrifices for various reasons in my life for my child you know, mostly for my child, that I did not pursue this as hard as I'm pursuing it right now. But now that I'm in a position where I can, kind of decided that I'd rather struggle and go after my, my dreams and my passion than to part-time it like I've been doing for so many years. So for those of you who don't know, I am a degreed teacher. <laughs> I, and not just a teacher, I'm a degreed educator. I could teach on the college level if I wanted to. I can go back um, full time in the system that I'm in and get paid very well. I can go back into administration in the school system and do very well. But it's not worth the stress. And I gave it all up. I took that leap. I went through a bad marriage ended that and at that point I said it's my turn I was expecting while I was in that marriage I knew that me moving on from a full-time teaching job was coming to an end 
And at the time, the person that I was with, the man that I was with, I said, you know, this at the end of the school year will be my last year teaching. So you're going to have to step up. Because for many years, I've always stepped up for other people. I've made sacrifices so other people's businesses and dreams could come true. My son's father is a musician, and he didn't have to sacrifice his music career to raise a child. I did. You know, the person that I was married to, I helped them try to build their business. It wasn't in the music business, so I was splitting my time between working helping them build their business and still trying to build my own business. And so I decided to go for it and here I am. So marriage done, put my house up for sales so it wouldn't go into foreclosure. Sold it for a little bit, a lot less than what I wanted to buy. Yeah. Not ashamed that I've been on food stamps several times in my lifetime because I look at it differently. I look at it as that was my tax money that you took anyway, so I'm coming back to get my money because right now I'm not working. So, you know, been through it. I'm going to go to Atlanta. Well, something happened. I was accepted to get into this artist's apartment, which is low income, thank God, because it is nothing like what you would pay in D.C. Trust and believe. So, for this last year, I've been in the artist apartment. I've been working hard, working on music, subbing when I can, making, just making the best of it. But the struggle is real because what you see, <laughs> video, this, that, and the other, you have no idea. Like, I've had a client say, how do you even pay for things? Like, yeah, studio time costs, rhythms costs. Everything costs. I don't always get the return on it. I don't get the product quick enough. So I have to pay somebody to do something, you know. And so a lot of times it's sacrifice. I will sacrifice going out. And it's another thing because people want to be like, oh, Empress don't go out that much anymore. Empress can't afford to go out every damn weekend. Let's get that straight right now. Empress cannot afford to pay you $20, you $20, and you $20 because it's four or five different fets the whole weekend. I will support when I can support, and when I can't, I sit my ass home and promote myself and work on music and write. Write a song, write a play, write a short film. I'm doing something but I ain't spending no money. So please know, so to everybody who say Empress don't come out unless she performing, yeah, you're kind of right because Empress can't afford to come out until she's performing. I support when I can. So people don't understand. They just see you and they think, yeah, she got it going on. She got songs out. She making money. She getting gigs. Sometimes I'm doing gigs just to promote. I'm not even getting anything. And that soon will stop. You don't have the funding like you need. Like, you really have to deal with people and their foolishness. Like, their personal stuff. Oh, this happened, that happened, and I couldn't get the, the information to you. I couldn't get the music to you. I couldn't finish this, so I couldn't do that. And the whole time you're waiting, 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 and other people are holding you up. And it's like, if I had the money, I could pay somebody who will move on this, who this is all they do, this is their, this is their bread and butter, so they're serious about it. So when you, when you have limited budget, you have to deal with a whole lot of foolishness in this business. It's it's so ridiculous. <laughs> but the other part of the struggle is real because my time is coming up. And I'm going to end it at 20 minutes. And I'm going to edit it down hopefully to 15 minutes this time. But the struggle to make a song bust, it's like, I don't know what the formula is. I just don't know. And so it's like the money for gigs and the things that I want to do. It's not going to happen until I make a song bus. Or I get at least one of the DJs that everybody follow fashion after. Like it, play it, and then everybody else will start playing and it'll bus. So I'm struggling because 
I have yet to make a song bust worldwide. It's bust, you know, I go and perform and people love the music, but I have not figured out. I mean, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done it yet. So it's coming <laughs> and it's coming in 2020. I just, so I'm going to do all my church announcements before I log off this vlog. I just dropped my first first contribution for 2020 it's called hit the floor it was produced by big red big red productions out of grenada yeah yes i work with some great producers within the caribbean market despite what some people may think or say <laughs> big up g6 who's always been my producer like I said before, Freddie Harris III is one of my producers. I have my own rhythm coming out that I worked on with my music director, my rock music director. So we put together a, a rhythm. It was supposed to release a long time ago, but it just wasn't right. Everything is about timing. And then when I started working with Big Red, he came in and added some more Caribbean flavor to it. And now, boom, this rhythm is going to sell off. I'm going to be introducing you to some people some artists out of my camp that i'm presenting I have an artist named cubanist from jamaica who's trying his hand at soca on this rhythm the song bad the song bad my song on this rhythm bad 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 gal anthem and i have another artist brand new <laughs> but has always been in my camp she's gonna be voicing our song on the rhythm and some more surprises and other artists busting on this rhythm. So, a lot coming out. So, stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. It's free to support. Only thing you're going to get is a notification that I uploaded a video. And I don't do that that often, trust. I'm going to get better at these vlogs. They, I'm going to try not for them to be a month apart, but... Now that I have myself organized and I know which each one is going to be about, we're going to work on that. So, don't forget, hit the floor drop, go check it out under there. After you watch this video, check out, hit the floor, leave a comment, like it, don't like it. I don't even, if you don't like it, let me know. Because I, I know that everything ain't for everybody. And I always will talk about this in another vlog. Always get flack about my accent. So, some people gonna like it, some people not. I love it. It's near and dear to my heart because it was inspired by one of my favorite rock songs, Believe It or Not. And it has a little jab jab flavor to it. And I love jab jab music. Why every time I'm doing this vlog, somebody wanna... Anyway... But check out Hit the Floor. Two more, two more songs dropping probably right after Carnival. Um, after the Trinidad Carnival season. Getting ready for all the rest of the other carnivals. Also, Afri Caribbean Festival 2021. I am involved with that. I will be performing on that. And my friends, it is all the way in Sierra Leone, Africa. Make sure you go check out what that's all about on Afri Caribbean festival.com and most importantly this year I am co-hosting and hosting some parties for Car Charleston Carry Fest in Charleston, South Carolina is June 20th please, please, please check it out I have a band on the road if you want a section in my band hit me up, hit me up right below and then we'll, get, we'll link up, we'll contact um, also doing a couple of fets during that time as well, and I will be performing on the main stage. So put June 20th, the weekend of June 20th, that's June 19th, 20th, 21st. We are, well, actually, it's not even 19th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, because we have an opening symposium on that Thursday. Make sure you put Charleston Carry Fest on your calendar, June 20th. We're coming. We're bringing the vibes it's going to be nothing but niceness. We're going to make Charleston Carnival one of the premier carnivals to come to. It's a beautiful city, beautiful tourist area, beautiful beaches, beautiful city, and it's historic. Come get a piece of our history and see how our Caribbean lineage is connected to this city. So, thank you for tuning in to the Naked Empress.